best be ever against Bivol is coming up and why have people got it all wrong? Let's get into it. Hello, welcome to Ami Edson. I hope you're all well. So in a couple of weeks, we've got Better Be Ever against Bivol, the fight that we've all been waiting for. It's been rearranged since April, was it? And uh, we, this expectation has been growing and growing and growing off the Better Be Ever sustained an injury. That's why the fight had to be postponed. We've got it now. And, you know, we're waiting for it. It's, you know, first of all, I was thinking the undercard isn't that great. But actually, on reflection, it's not bad. You know, I can't really complain about it. However, however, Better be ever against Bivol. We've had the preview. We've had the press conferences. And they're not, let's put it this way. They're not the biggest talkers. They're not the... Then they, they don't have a lot of personality. Now, and I appreciate that English is not their first language, okay? And they're doing their best. And, you know, they come across very well as gentlemen, as being very respectful and all that kind of stuff. However, however, they're not really selling the fight. What is selling the fight is just their awesomeness as boxers, right? It's just that these two amazing fighters are going to get in the ring and finally we're going to find out who is the best? Who is going to be undisputed in the light heavyweight division? That's what we're looking for. That's what's selling the fight. But if you're asking the man on the street or the woman on the street about better be ever than Bivol, a lot of people will go, who? What? But if you ask people on the street about Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury, they'll be like, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's interesting. So what I'm saying is that this doesn't really attract the casual fan. This captures the imagination of boxing fans and possibly a little bit wider. But these two guys don't really know how to sell a fight to really appeal to the wider masses, as it were. Now, back in April, I did a prediction video of whom I thought would win this fight. And interestingly, months later, I'm still getting uh, comments on that video, uh, you know, saying how wrong I was or how right I was. People don't realize that video was made months and months ago, right? So now it's a totally different thing. Better be as a little bit older. He's come off that injury. And whether that injury is going to play on his mind or whether it's going to hinder him in any, any way, shape or form. Bivol, by contrast, I believe he's had what, what, a couple of fights uh, in that meantime. In one of the fights, he did not too convince him for a couple of uh, rounds. Uh, then he got clocked, and then he decided, right, I, I better start doing some work here. And then he won easily. But the point is, you've got the bull against the, 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 the master, as it were. They're both amazing fighters, but one has more of an aggressive style, and the other one is more of the boxer. This is my prediction. My prediction for this fight is that Either one is going to win. <laughs> what a stupid prediction, right? I, I can't call it. Because it's either going to be a better we have by a knockout, because he's, what, had 20 fights, 20 knockouts, I mean, absolute insanity. But I believe that Bivol won't knock out better we have. The only knockout chance we're going to get is from better we have against Bivol. I think Bivol is going to win on points. So I'm going to stick with that. My prediction here is that Bivol will win on points. He will not win by knockout. Better be ever, I think the age is going to get to him and I think possibly that injury might be hindering him a little bit. That's my prediction. Shoot me down if you want, but that's my prediction. I just can't wait. I can't wait for this fight. I can't wait for the undercard. And, I, and again, once again, you know, Riyadh sees and Tokyo Shake, they're, they're just giving us what we want, right? This is fantastic stuff. But where lots of people, commentators, have got their preview and their preview video all wrong, well, I'm afraid they just don't know their, their film history. They just don't know what this story is all about. Okay, so let me enlighten you, right? So basically, they're, they're both from Russians, right? So they're showing some kind of old medieval Russian warlords. Uh, people have been talking about Game of Thrones and you're like going, oh, God, what was all that about? Obviously, people have no idea what they're talking about. So the whole point is these two guys are from Russia, traditional Russia. This is where men were men and, you know, babies were eaten and all this kind of stuff. Right. This all stems from Highlander, the film. Christopher Lambert, Sean Connery, Highlander. And their mortal enemy in that film was the Kurgan. Now, the Kurgans were, you know, uh, an evil uh, warrior race uh, from uh, Russia. 
So that's basically what they are. They're the Kurgans. They're fighting each other. That's where they're from. Even in the preview video, when they go head to head, they say, you know, the, the narrator says there can be only one. And there's a slight little pause. And I think it says winner out of this. Yeah, because the, the tagline in the film is there can be only one. You see, so that's why this this whole preview is based on the Highlander and it's got nothing to do with Game of Thrones and it's got nothing to do with uh, medieval this and that. It's all based on that film. And fair play to Riyadh Seas and Tika Shekel who never made the video because this is fantastic stuff. This is really good. This you, You're tapping into pop culture and you're identifying where these two fighters are from what they can kind of represent and they're tying it into a an amazing story which is in the process of being revamped quite soon i think the new highlander film is coming out quite soon as well so the time of this couldn't be more perfect but that's the reason why that preview video was like that it's based upon where they're from and they're linking up to the highlander the highlander film and the the tagline in the film is there can be only one because there can be only one undisputed, right? That's the whole point of it. And for me, that one, the one that is going to win this is Dimitri Bivol. I don't think Arta Betabiev is going to do it. I, it's so hard to call this one. It's so hard to say because Betabiev has been out for a long time. He's had that injury as well. But he, you just cannot underestimate the power and the, the ferociousness of that guy. But you take... Bivol, the cultured boxer, the, one of the pound for pounds, absolutely. Him and Bitterbiev, they're, they're evenly matched, but for different reasons. And as fighters, you know, they're going to get in the ring and they're going to duke it out. And we just can't wait to, to, to see. Bitterbiev has had fights where you thought he's under pressure here. Same as Bivol. Every fighter has that. Of course they do. But you thought a couple of times in, in some of Betabiev's more recent fights, you think, oh, you know, hey, you, you, might get, uh, you might get caught out here. And then all of a sudden he turns it on and just knocks out his opponent. Well, Bivol, he's never really had that, that pressure against him that I can recall where I thought, oh, you're going to get knocked out here. So I don't, I, I think Bivol is going to be more elusive than many of Betabiev's uh, former opponents. And he's going to definitely have more skills than all of those uh, opponents as well. And I just don't, not, I'm not sure whether Betabiev is going to be able to cope with those skills as well. Again, clutching at straws here, trying to find a needle in a haystack just to separate these two. But I still stick with Bivol for the win on points. I think it's going to be an epic fight. I absolutely can't wait. But just so you know, the preview that all these boxing channels have been talking about, they've all got it completely wrong. And you can tell them that I said so as well. The preview video is all about two Russian uh, medieval fighters, warlord fighters from the Kurgans. And they were based in, in Russia. And it's all based on the Highlander film, There Can Be Only One. If you like what I do here, don't forget to like and share the video. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notifications bell for all future videos. And we'll catch you again on another video coming very soon. Bye now.